eBay. I hope you've been on the road, big man. I hope you've put in the miles, running, everything, rounds as well. Because otherwise, if you come like you did against Francis Engano, nah, mate, it's not going to work out for you, Stipe. Man, like, um, can we talk UFC 241 Cormier Miocic? Can't wait. I can't wait. So Cormier beats Miocic first time round. I think, I want to say first round TKO, man. It hits him on the break. The scrambling and dirty boxing hits him, knocks him out, bang, done. Um, people say it's a bit of a lucky punch. I don't know anything about that because DC had said that he'd seen something in Stipe Miocic that when on the break, he kind of switches off a little bit. His defense kind of goes to part. And you know what the joke is? A lot of fighters have been doing this, this of late. Javante Tant Davis gets a knockout the other day from, from a similar situation. It's a weird one that high level fighters tend to go to sleep on the clinch break, especially mixed martial arts dude, and especially dudes who have defended four times, I think, for Stipe Miocic, and are as high level as Stipe Miocic. Potentially that could, that could be the key to him getting it done this time round. But anyway, Stipe Miocic loses. Says, you know what, Daniel, you owe me a rematch. Sack off all this Brock Lesnar business. I know he's a big money fighter and you ain't looking to fight again because you're getting old and you said he was going to retire at 40. Brock Lesnar fight falls through because he goes and signs, signs with WWE again. Who's left on there now? Now you've got to fight Steep here again. Greatest heavyweight ever, almost winningest UFC heavyweight champion ever at four defences back to back of it. So, boom, it's on again. I don't know who I'm picking in this fight still. I don't know who to pick. My heart says I should go with DC, but as good as Stipe Miocic is. I don't know, man, if he's fixed that issue, if he doesn't switch off at the clinch break, I don't know how DC can get it done, really. Can he take Stipe Miocic down? He's a brilliant wrestler, isn't he? But I don't, I don't know the size difference. Well, I suppose it's never hurt DC before. The way he was flinging around Josh Barnett in the in in the wrestling, nearly I think he even took down Johnny Bones Jones once. So boy, if he can get those two down, then what's to stop him doing the same to to Stipe Miocic? You know what? I'm favouring Stipe, and the reason why I'm favouring Stipe is because a good the old adage in boxing: a good big man will always or most of the time be a good little man. And how, how many fights more is Daniel Cormier going to overcome substantial physical disadvantages? Shorter, less reach, not as quick. I, I, I don't know if he can grind out Stipe again. And Stipe's had 12 months of prepare, right? Very wisely, I might add, sat out and waited for his rematch. Don't be fighting these other dangerous heavyweights in the meantime. And then all of a sudden you get an upset defeat, as can happen in mixed martial arts and combat sports. And then you go to the back of the line. Fair play, Stipe. Use your head, man. Just waited it out. Brock didn't fight. You got the fight. Fair play. I, I fancy Stipe. I don't know if I'm going to put money to it. I haven't looked at the odds. I suspect that DC is ever such a slight favourite. Um, but I think Stipe, by, by using his boxing and keeping DC at range as far as possible. Not forgetting to give defense respect on the clinch break. I think if he ticks those three boxes, man, he can get it done against DC. And then unfortunately, our DC John, Johnny Bones Jones three is, is down the pothole, isn't it? I really want to see that fight. I really want to know DC's lost already to Johnny Bones Jones twice. But what bigger fight in UFC is there at the moment? I want to see that fight. Hence, I am secretly rooting for Daniel Cormier to, to get it done against Stipe. Now, what does Daniel flip reverse this? Daniel, Daniel Cormier's keys to victory. He needs to put it on Stipe Miocic for five rounds from the outset. He's to close that. The same old Daniel Cormier, modus operandi, right? He's to close the distance, get a hold of him, chain wrestle. Make, make him work at every junction. Because we saw Stipe. Stipe, even though he didn't have to work too extensively against Fran Francis Ngannou, 
Towards the end of the fight, the third and the fourth and the fifth, there were questions about his gas tank. You can't have a Conor McGregor S type gas tank. You can't have it against Daniel Cormier because Daniel Cormier is going to make you work every second of every round for five rounds. He's going to put the pressure on you. He's going to chain wrestle. He's going to get you to the ground. And when you're going to get when you get back, he's going to look to double leg you, leg you again straight away because that's the type of dude that Daniel Cormier is. Olympic level wrestling, division one, crazy gas tank. The geezer trains with Cain Velasquez, for God's sake. Cain Velasquez, that's a serious gas tank. Steve, I hope you've been on the road, big man. I hope you've put in the miles, running, everything, rounds as well. Because otherwise, if you come like you did against Francis Engano, nah, mate, it's not going to work out for you, Steve. Daniel Cormier will take full advantage. So they make his keys to victory. Daniel Cormier's gas tank, pressure, closing the distance, relentlessness, and resilience. But again, we can't question Daniel and them things. It's not like he's gonna, uh, he's fighting at heavyweight, man. It's not like he's had a stiff weight cut getting down to 205. Listen, that geezer's gonna come with gas for days and sick wrestling. So Stipe wants to fight hard and clever for five, five rounds and keep him at the end. Post right, keep him at the end of the jab and spot fight smart on the, on the clinch break and he'll be all right, man. Stipe to get it done, I'm backing him. But I want Daniel Cormier because I want the third Johnny Burns Jones fight. Nate Diaz, Anthony Pettis, blimey. At 170, so I know Anthony Pettis has only recently moved up. Why does he want that smoke with Nate Diaz at 170? Nate Diaz is coming off a mad left. Mate, the dude cut down to 155. I know Nate Diaz, much like Daniel Cormier, has got gas for days. The dude, dude's doing triathlon in off season for fits and kicks. He's got gas. But still, man, listen, Anthony, I think that's a really bad mistake. Mate, the dude cut down to 155. You need every advantage that you can get in this fight game. It's a serious business. Anthony Showtime Pettis kicks sick. Low kicks though, sack off the body kicks. You need to take out Nate Diaz's legs. You have to early as well. You've got to commit to it, man. Um, Nate Diaz can get it done via pressure. If he pressures Anthony Pettis, we've seen it before where Anthony doesn't like the constant pressure. He's a man similar to uh, Stipe. He likes, to, he likes to take breaks in between rounds. So if Nate's serious, and, uh, and weaponizes his cardio, puts the pressure just like Tony Ferguson did against Anthony Pettis. Constant pressure, showing him different looks and Nate Diaz can get it done. Anthony Pettis needs to be, needs to show discipline in his strategy like we've never seen him before still. The dude likes to brawl. If he's being honest, as technically competent as he is, a lot of his fights descend into brawlery, right? Pub brawls. If, however, he sticks to that low kick game, if he invests early, similar to Conor McGregor in the second fight against Nate Diaz, in leg kicks, can take out Nate Diaz's base and mitigate the pressure somewhat. Well, I don't know, it's a pick and fight still. I want to go Anthony Pettis, but again, I just, I doubt that he can, I doubt that he has the strategic discipline to commit to three or five, I don't even know if it's a three or five round, but three rounds, let's say, minimum of low kicks and not brawling with Nate Diaz. I think Nate Diaz might get him into a brawl, in which case Pettis will lose. Let's talk to Romero and Costa. Why? Mexican supplements any. Two dudes that look like they're, they're strongman contestants, built, ripped, eight packs all round, Biceps for days, it's gonna be a big fight still. Um, again, this might, cardio might have a lot to do with this because you're Romero again, a geezer. If I'm Costa, I'm on that row machine 24 hours a day yeah, before this fight because you know that if you take my man into deep waters, he's proven that his gas tank is rubbish. All those muscles take their toll, right? You can't have so much fight fast twitch fibers and make it 25 minutes or 15 minutes as their fight will be. Can't do it. 
So Costa, again, I don't even know about Costa's gas tank because he's ripped as well. Maybe he doesn't have it either, but Costa invests in, in the pressure game, gets his DC on, but then Yo's dangerous, right? Yo will just sit there and chill out, chill out, find his little gaps to rest in, and then all of a sudden, boom! Fly knee like what he got Chris Weidman with. So he's a very, very dangerous dude in his wrestling's peak, right? But again, I feel like he's, the cardio is his weakness. Common female, cardio is either their strength per Nate Diaz and Daniel Cormier, or, or potential weakness per Anthony Showtime Pettis and Stipe Miotic. And now your Romero. If you can get him to dive deep on his gas tank and not give him a rest, your Romero is there and obviously protect yourself and avoid the, the big explosive attacks when he runs forward like Vandalay Silva used to. Your Romero is there for the taking. Um, keep it on the feet, Costa. Don't wrestle with this monster geezer, this physical freak that they call you well, Romero. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know, I think Costa can do it, but why? That geezer, Yo Romero, who would want to fight that physical free? He's only 100 years old as well, walking around with six pack. I exaggerate ever so slightly, he's probably about 40 years old by now. But he's still walking around looking like a physical freak. If he's not on the Mexican supplements, I know he's just got 27 million for a, for a tainted, a tainted supplement. But if he's not on the proper supplements, I don't know who he's. And when I say supplements, I mean PEDs. Um, Looking forward to it, man. UFC 241. Don't forget to smash the like, comment, please, and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more of these boxing, combat sports, UFC, Muay Thai, K1, everything. Bless for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.